Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm going to be editing a single shot astro landscape image which I shot a few weeks ago and there's no stacking or tracking on this edit. But before I show you that I really must point out a few very important things that need to be considered and I think the very first thing is this why would we choose to shoot a single exposure tripod mounted shot rather than stacking multiple frames or, or uh, layering and blending many shots or even perhaps using a star tracker to shoot our nightscapes? Okay, now this may well open up a can of worms and I'll do my best to tread carefully regarding this particular topic. Okay, so on the surface, our immediate response may well be to say it's just easier to shoot one image rather than multiple images. And yes, it sure is easier to shoot one image in the field. But will it be easier to get what we want in the editing? Well, maybe it will or maybe it won't. Honestly, it all depends on what our expectations are. Do we want to wow everybody with amazing detail and beautiful uh, lighting techniques with everything sharply in focus across the frame and clear as a bell? Well, if that's the case, then we really will want to use a different technique as it's highly unlikely that we can achieve all of that in a single frame. For example, if we want to shoot a subject that's really close in the frame with a Milky Way in the background, then we, we're going to have trouble with focus. And often we need to focus stack to, to fix that, and that requires at least two images. It's the same if we want to uh, light paint a detailed foreground subject. It's, it's really hard to get that right in just one shot. You'll end up running around like a headless chook from side to side with a very high possibility of tripping over something in the dark. And yes, I have done that plenty of times. Uh, and then of course we have the dreaded noise that always seems to accompany short shutter speeds and high ISOs. All right, so when would it be a good idea to shoot single frames without all of the headaches I've just mentioned? Well, okay, in my opinion, if we can frame up a scene that doesn't require anything really close to the camera to be extremely sharp, and if we can use existing lighting or provide lighting that is simple to apply, then we'll have the basic blocks in place to take advantage of the uh, simplicity of a single frame. Now just to finish this little introduction, I want to say that there's a place for all types of photography in astro landscape shooting. And as you know, I've been doing a lot of single exposures recently myself. But there are many scenarios where I wouldn't attempt a single shot, and I'm always choosing very carefully the compositions where I do shoot single frames. Anyway, look, I just want you to think about it rather than assume that if it's a single exposure, then it'll be automatically a lot easier to produce an outstanding image. In my experience, it's often the opposite to that. But with one very important caveat, we need to get a handle on the post processing. And I have to say that editing and post production techniques regarding uh, astro landscape images have progressed quite dramatically in the past couple of years. And in this video, I'll be showing you some things that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do a couple of years ago. Uh, I'm a big believer that we need to use the best tools for the job at hand. And that often means spending time and money to learn these tools. So with that in mind, let's head over to the computer and I'll show you exactly how I would edit a single frame nightscape image. So where I'm going to start this video is with the final image. I'm in Lightroom here and this is what our image ended up looking like. So it's a single composition frame of the old silos and I went out there a week or so ago, shot this uh, a number of different ways and you probably saw that video. This is a single exposure and I'm using 
a Nikon Z6 Mark II camera with a 20 millimeter f1.8 lens. You can see the specs here. Shot at 13 second shutter speed at ISO 3200. All right, so that's what the final image looks like. So let's go back to the original frame. So this is how it came out of the camera. Now, you can see here, initially here in Lightroom, I have done a couple of adjustments, just a little bit exposure. I've added some shadow detail because I want to get it a little bit more out of this foreground. And what else did I do? Let's have a look here. Hardly any, well, no noise reduction at all here. I'll show you why later. Uh, I've ticked all the profile corrections, etc. Now, if you're wondering what that looks like without any adjustments, there's a comparison. So the image on the left is how it came out of the camera. And by the way, I shot this with my Hydrogen Alpha modified camera. And I did a comparison video between a standard camera and a Hydrogen Alpha camera image last week. And you can have a look at that. And I even shot this similar location, the same location, but around the back of the building. But anyway, so the shadows, you can see I've lifted in the foreground here, a little bit of brightness in the sky. Uh, because I, I wanted to do that. The other thing a lot of people ask me is what white balance do I set using uh, an Astro modded camera? Uh, and I set my camera in camera at 3000. You can see it there, 3000 Kelvin. I also add a touch of green in camera. So I think it's plus 1.5 in the green tint. Uh, so this is exactly how it came out of the camera. There's no adjustment done there at all. Now, a lot of people just shoot auto white balance and things like that. I prefer not to. I much prefer to have something set that I can sort of always go back to. It's being a similar edit. So the key to this edit, now I'm going to say it right up front here, is Photoshop. I need Photoshop to make this image really come to life. So what I'm going to do now is right click on the image and edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop 2024. So let's do that. And we'll come back and have a look and see what that looks like. This is what we have here in Photoshop. You can see one single frame. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, duplicate the layer. So I go to Layer, Duplicate, and I'm going to call this Starless. And you're probably thinking, what on earth are you talking about? What's Starless? I'll explain in a minute. Then I'm going to duplicate that layer one more time and call this one Stars. Now, some of you have already guessed what I'm going to be doing here is using a plugin to Photoshop called RC Astro Star Exterminator. It is fantastic. And it is, let me say it right here, it is the key to getting great Milky Way photographs, whether it's a single shot, stacked, tracked, it doesn't matter. I use it on everything. And what it essentially does is separates the stars from the nebulosity in the background. So I've just created two layers here so I can have them on two separate places. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on that starless image. And by the way, I always name my files because I think it's important. Uh, once you get a few layers going over here in Photoshop, you think, oh, which one's which? So starless and go up to filter up the top here and go right down to the bottom where it says RC Astro. Now, this is a paid plugin to Photoshop. I know some of you are going to cringe when you hear that. Let me tell you, if you take the time to learn some of these tools, they are phenomenal. Absolutely. It makes the job so much easier. Yes, it costs a few dollars, but it's well worth it in my opinion. So I'm going to press OK on that. And now the software is actually removing the stars from the background nebulosity. Now, depending on the specs of your computer, this can take a little while. There we go. You can see the layer there. What it's done, it's removed the stars. Now, that's pretty magical, isn't it? All right, now the next step is to create the stars only in this top layer. So I've turned that back on, click on it. Then I'm gonna go up to image at the top here, right down to apply image, go to where it says merged at the moment, and I'm going to click on starless. Then I'm going to this blending mode, change it from multiply to subtract. And you can see there, we just have stars. That's also pretty magical, isn't it? Anyway, I'm just going to uh, turn that one off for the time being. Go back to our starless layer, and I'm going to duplicate that layer. The reason I do that is just in case I make a mistake or do something I shouldn't, I've got one to fall back on. So. There we have Starless Copy. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go up to Filter. 
I'm going to go down to Camera Raw Filter. Click on that, and I'm going to do some adjustments on this. Now, the first thing to consider with an image like this is that the sky and the foreground will require uh, marginally different edits. So there's a number of ways you can do this, but what I'm going to do is go into the mask tool, create a new mask, and select the sky. Have a look at that. Took all of half a second to select the sky. And now whatever adjustments I make here will only apply to the sky, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to go down here to Dehaze. I'm going to click that across a fair way. And you can see what that does. It basically it adds a lot of contrast, makes that Milky Way pop out a bit more, but it changes the color a fair bit. It's added a fair bit of blue. So I'm just going to go up here to the color tab and add some yellow, which is the opposite to blue, as you can see. I'm by no means finish, finished with the color. Um, and perhaps add a touch of exposure, just a little bit, just here. Just about that much because I'm mindful I don't want to blow out these areas at the bottom that are a bit brighter but that's what I want to do initially I think so as far as that dehaze I went plus 48 you know it's there's no set number for this I'm just looking at the image so I'm going to click OK on that and there we have a fair bit of uh, bumping up of the the uh, nebulosity there not finished yet let's go down here to add an adjustment layer down the bottom here click on curves so i'm going to click on a curves adjustment layer you see what happens here you get a, a, a graphical display now i can also change that from rgb to the three layer um, colors red green and blue uh, at this stage i'm just going to leave those alone so i'm going to go back to rgb and i'm just going to lower and create a, a, an s curve in this so let's just have a look at this you can see what we've done there. We just, again, added some, I, I would say we've added contrast. But one thing you're going to notice here is it's affecting the, the foreground as well as the background. So um, I can fix that. So that's what we just did. And you can see how it's adjusted everything. It's foreground as well. Um, what I think I'll just do here just to fix that is to go to my brush tool, make sure it's black. We've created a mask here, which is white. Um, so if I paint black over that, it will rub out whatever I have just done. So you can see here I've got it at 100% opacity and I'm just going to rub it out. It's a feathered brush. So it's not a hard brush. It's a feathered brush at this point in time. Make the brush a bit smaller. Just get in here a little bit. The reason I'm doing this is because I want detail in the foreground and the more I darken it, the less detail I'm going to get. Um, there's a lot of ways you can select foregrounds and skies. You saw me select the sky earlier. Well, you can also sort of basically select the foreground by inverting that mask. But I've just done it this way just to make it. Um, you can see there on the black, the black is what I've just rubbed out. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So currently I'm just really working on the sky. I'm not working on the foreground at all. I'll do a little bit with that in a minute. Okay, all right, that looks pretty good. Happy with that. Now, um, the other thing I might look at doing here is going to my adjustment layers again and going to color balance. Now here you see these, basically the three color uh, sliders come up. Now, because I'm using a hydrogen alpha modified camera, there's often a lot of pinks and, and magentas. Now, this image doesn't look too bad to be honest but sometimes there are a lot and you might want to adjust add a bit more yellow or put a bit more blue you can see how that affects the image there i really don't know if it needs too much to be honest i these days i like to favor images that are a little bit more um warmer i don't like the really solid blue images that a lot of people do now if i push that over to the red you can see what happens a lot of hydrogen alpha camera signals come out looking more like this. So I would strongly suggest moving away from the red and adding a little bit of cyan here. Perhaps you could even go into the green channel, but I don't need to. You can see there's lots of green in the sky. There was a lot of green air glow on this particular night. All right, I'm just gonna leave that there. So that here, you can see the difference. It's just added, it's taken away a little bit more of the magenta. But the reason I have a hydrogen alpha camera in the first place, let me just zoom in a bit here 
is to is to see these bits here which are very quite prominent in that part now one of the things you will notice with a single shot as opposed to stacking or tracking you will have less signal so people will say you stack or you track with longer exposure times to get more signal and that's very true so that's one of the downsides of shooting single frames when you're trying to capture a lot of detail it's hard to capture a lot of detail if you don't have enough signal so there's a thing known as the signal to noise ratio if your signal is high your noise will be lower now you can see if i zoom back into this image it's very noisy i'm going to fix that in a minute well marginally fix it i mean there's only so much you can do so um I'm very happy with how this image is looking so far. So let's just have a bit more of a squeeze. So you can see the different adjustments that I've done here. So what I'm going to do here, by the way, by using um, adjustment layers, then I actually have layer masks and you can see there and you can rub out bits of the image or you can adjust portions of the image rather than the whole collective image. Now, once again, with this color balance, you'll note there that I actually adjusted the whole image here because I haven't, uh, rubbed out the foreground but to be honest I I didn't do enough adjustment to make a big deal of difference so I'm just going to leave that for the time being now sometimes you might look at this image and say oh it's a little bit dark in some of these areas so all I've got to do there is go to the layer that's the relevant layer which is this one click on that layer go over to my brush tool and drop the opacity down to let's say about I don't know 20 percent 23 percent get a big brush nice big brush and also just let's just drop that uh, canvas a bit big brush and sort of feather in some of those darker areas and I do this a lot because one of the things you'll get when you're doing these adjustments is you'll get sometimes you get hot hot areas that are really bright and other areas that are really dark and that's because an s curve is actually dropping the darker tones and increasing the brighter tones so what I'm going to do now is go back in there and just make a little further adjustment to that because I really want this Milky Way to pop you can see what happens when you drag down the shadow detail on this end it actually pops more and what I want to do is go back into that um, layer mask and just gently that's at about 23 let's just go down to about 16 percent thereabouts and just gently rub out some of that darker patch so essentially the adjustment is a little bit less around the edges I like it I reckon that's looking pretty good so you can see the difference that's made and if you want to make more adjustment you just go in with a very fine level on that brush and change it yeah, I reckon that looks pretty good pretty good indeed so what I'm going to do there now this is something I do a lot is when I'm happy with this particular series of adjustment layers I will click on the actual copy there the layer and I'll go up to layer on the top menu go right down to merge visible and what that does it merges the visible layers that's only these three if I had these other ones checked that would merge them as well I don't want to do that just yet so let's do that merge visible and now that is only on one layer the reason you do all of this well it's to it's to not have dozens of layers sometimes you're working on little adjustments and you don't want all of these things to be uh, going off the bottom of the page all right now just while we're at this point I haven't done a lot to be honest I'm just going to click on that star layer and I'm going to change the blend mode from a normal to one of these light in the screen ones now I'm going to go to color dodge but I could choose lighten as you can see there I could choose screen or linear dodge or lighter all of those will do a similar thing but I like color dodge because there are actually less stars now so many people ask me about my star minimization method and this is it this is how I do my star I used to do all sorts of funny things in Photoshop and that would tend to leave artifacts in the sky by using this method I'm not leaving artifacts it's really really clean all right now another thing this is another thing I'm going to show you is I often will duplicate that layer so I'm going to do that right now duplicate layer and now what that's basically doing is doubling up on that effect but sometimes you think to yourself hang on I don't need that many stars so here is my next trick I'm going to click on that top copy layer and add a layer mask and I want that layer mask to actually be black not white so to do that I press Control and I on my keyboard and that inverts the mask 
So now you can't actually see anything on that layer until I apply a white paintbrush. So let's get my paintbrush tool back to 100% opacity, soft brush, but a small one. And what I'm going to do here is make my canvas bigger so I can see the whole thing a lot better. Oh, by the way, there's a lot of noise. I'm going to fix it up when we in a minute and get my brush nice and small and click and you'll see what's happening here. I'm selecting stars, specific stars and areas that I want to come out a little bit more pronounced. You see, I'm just picking the bright stars. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, why are you doing that? Well, I'm doing that because I'm actually selecting the stars that I want to be able to see on that second layer. Now, this Roafuki area here is really prominent. So I want to be able to see all the stars nice and clearly in that. And, you know, th this is star minimization by default. I'm not doing any specific minimizing of stars. And in fact, what I'm actually doing is maximizing the bright stars. Because when I look up in the sky at night, I see all of these stars. That's how I can distinguish the constellations. And many of you will know when you take photographs of these areas of the sky, suddenly the star constellation can't be seen anymore because you sort of lose the bright stars in amongst all the mess of lesser bright stars. So that's why I'm doing this. Anyway, so I'll go over the whole image and selectively find the brighter stars, click on them. All I'm doing is actually clicking, I'm painting a white paintbrush over to that black mask and that's how come you can see them and only on the areas that I click. It's pretty clever, isn't it? So I'll just go through all of these brighter stars and do that. You can see here, I've even gone over that uh, satellite trial or I, I think it is a satellite. They're everywhere. I can see them crisscrossing this image everywhere. Uh, it's good for meteors if you want to make a meteor stand out. So let's just go out and have a look at a wider shot of this image. And now you can see quite clearly that the bright stars are showing out really nicely on top of the sky here, but the rest of the sky is quite free from stars. And this makes the nebulosity stand out really, really nicely. All right, now there's one real big thing I've got to do. So I'm going to turn those star layers off and go back to my starless layer. I need to apply some noise reduction. It's very noisy in there. And what I'm going to do is use a second plugin. And we go up to filter, Topaz. So I'm using Topaz Denoise. And I'm going to do a fairly aggressive noise reduction on this. Remember, I didn't do anything in Lightroom. You could, if you don't use Topaz, uh, then perhaps you could use um, the built-in, but you can see the difference. Here's on the left noise, on the right. Now, there are slight artifacts around edges of things. That's a bit of a payoff. But I'll tell you what, unless you're zoomed right in close like this, you cannot see them. And, you know, I'm not a pixel peeper. I'm not one of those people that looks at an image and say, oh, I, I, I can see a, a little dot of noise there. That isn't how most people look at images. So this is just a standard model, severe noise. I'm going to click apply, and that will apply that. And it's very quick, as you can see. And now we have this really softer, because that's what noise reduction does. It softens the image. And a lot of you are going to say, well, oh, I don't know if I want a soft Milky Way or as soft as that actually is. But let me tell you, um, it's not really that bad because the Milky Way, I think, with the stars put back in there, and I'll just show you what that looks like. It doesn't look soft at all to me. It looks, it looks clean. It looks noise free. Let's zoom in and have a look and see what, how it now does look. Have a look at that. That is fantastic. Look at that foreground. Now, by the way, I've just cleaned up the foreground as well as the sky. So it's done the whole image in one shot here. I could have totally separated the foreground, but I haven't at this point in time. Now, okay, a lot of you are going to want me to edit this more, but you know, I'm not going to do too much more because, you know, sometimes less is more. A lot of images that you will see on social media are over edited to the nth degree. And, uh, you know, this is a single shot. There's only so much I want to push this image. It's been pushed enough to get some beautiful detail out of that, that sky and that Milky Way. Uh, I haven't done anything with the foreground yet, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do there. I'm going to do that back in Lightroom. Why? Because I love the masking tools in Lightroom. And I know they're the same as what's in Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop, but the, the good thing is I do all my exporting from Lightroom. 
So any adjustments I do in Lightroom, I can just go back and change them. Once I exit out of Photoshop here, I can't change anything. Uh, I'm not gonna have these layers. I'm gonna flatten this image in a minute. And when I do that, uh, I, I can't do any of those fine adjustments that I just did here. Okay, so I hope you're all still with me. And what I'm going to do now is go up to Layer, Flatten Image down the bottom there. It says, do I want to discard the hidden layers? And I say, yes, man, I do. And there we go. We now have one layer. And uh, some of you will be scared at this point in time because you think, oh, no, am I going to change anything? Well, I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is just simply press the exit on Photoshop. It says, do I want to save this document? I say, yes. And that is now going to take me back to Lightroom. So here we are in Lightroom and you can see this is what we've done in Photoshop. Doesn't that look fantastic? But I want to do something with this foreground. I want to brighten that up. Um, now, there's a lot of ways you can do this. Uh, but I'm going to go to my masking tools. Now, these masking tools in Lightroom are fantastic. That's all I can say. So I'm going to click on that. And if I clicked on um, to select a subject, I'm not exactly sure what it's going to select. So let's just find out. Well, you can see it selected the, the building quite nicely. But I also probably want to select this foreground. So to do that, what I'm going to do is click this button that says Add. And it's going to ask me, what do I want to do to add? I'm just going to select a brush and click on the brush. And now all I have to do is simply brush in the foreground. And that's added to the selection. So that's pretty clever, isn't it? It's not rocket science. There's nothing much difficult about that. So you can see now I've got the foreground basically selected. And I can toggle that on and off by clicking on this show overlay tick here. All right, so what I want to do here is add some adjustments. The first thing I'm going to add is some clarity. So let's just do that. That just makes it pop a little bit more. You can see there, that looks good. And I'm also going to add some exposure. So let's do that. Oh yeah, that's starting to look really nice. There is light on this building, by the way, in, in the field and also some shadows little bit of shadow but I don't like adding too much shadow because it actually makes an image wash out you tend to lose contrast uh, and I've got I think I've got enough in this area to be lit because uh, basically I'm focused to infinity so with an image like this the close foreground is going to be out of focus so I don't really want to draw my attention to this grass here in the foreground I want to draw the attention to the building and the Milky Way and I think this does it quite nicely so I'm going to just add a little bit more exposure there that looks great there's a lot of different ways you can do this, and I might do some more brushing in a minute just to uh, separate some of these areas. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add another mask. This time, I'm going to select the sky. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm just going to add a little bit more oomph to that sky here. I'm going to click on that dehaze slider again and just move it across just a little bit. See how that's just started to make that Milky Way pop even more? I love it. And from here, you can just make whatever adjustments you think, if, if you think the colors change. When you use a lot of dehaze, it puts more blue into your image. So, you know, you can change that here. Uh, I tend to, as I said to you before, I like a little bit warmer images. I, I, I don't mind that glow around it. That's light pollution from a distant town. Um, and I don't mind it because, well, it's there and it actually helps to actually highlight the structure of this foreground here. So I think it looks great. I could have done this back in Photoshop, but I prefer to do it here because I can, I can play around a bit more with the foreground and sort of balance and blend them the way that I think would look good. All right, so I'm happy with that at this point in time. So let's just go out of that. Um, let's press F on the keyboard for a full screen view. Well, there you go. That's a single shot Milky Way image and I think it doesn't look too bad at all. So let's just hone in a little bit on some on some areas. Uh, firstly, well, here we can see the, the Milky Way. Clean as a whistle, noise free. Now, let's go into the corner. There's a little bit of star trailing, but not much. Uh, this is shot with a 20 millimeter F1.8 lens. So remember, this is a 13 second shutter speed. Good detail on that building. 
um, remember it's a single shot at a high ISO so you, the dynamic range is decreased at high ISO so this is shot at four, uh, 3200 ISO but even so not bad not bad at all now if you look at the close foreground out of focus and I, I knew that not only is it out of focus there's probably a little bit of wind at, at the time so the, it's blowing around in the breeze so the whole idea of this is to make it so that you're not drawn to the bits you don't want to be drawn to so what i did before i highlighted the the building with the mask remember and that also some of the foreground now i might look at that foreground and say oh okay um i want to darken some of these bits here so i can do that by going into the masking tools again creating a new mask and using a linear gradient tool so if i do that i'll just click down there and drag this line across you can see where where the red is that's being affected by my edit so I'm going to drop my exposure like something like that and I just twist it around a little bit something like that click on the show overlay now you can see clearly here that I'm actually going into the sky which I do not want to do or on that building so once again I go over here and click on subtract and I'm going to use a brush here click on brush to subtract and you can see that the circle there has a minus sign in the middle so by using that I can then uh, gently rub out on that overlay because the overlay shows me what's being affected here i don't want to affect the building just the foreground so there we go and by using the the edge of the brush you can see i'm feathering that in so now if i show the overlay you can see now i've darkened this bit here so that your eye is not your eye is not drawn to this bit here but it's still drawn into the middle of the image now you might want to do another one on the other side so let's do that linear gradient and go up here something like that drop the exposure so it darkens that edge of the image once again i want to subtract the bit of the sky that i don't want to be affected click on brush minus sign rub it out make sure it's not on the building that's good that's very good and uncheck that show overlay and so now i've darkened this bit and I've darkened that bit. What I do want to do is draw my, uh, the eye into the middle here. So I'm going to add yet another brush. Create a new mask. Click on brush. This time I'm going to go to exposure. Just a touch plus 10. Let's try that. And just make this bit here just a little tiny bit brighter. Let's go plus 20. Plus 30. Okay. So I've just made that bit a bit brighter. Just there. This is subtle. You can see there if you if you overlay, you can see what it's affected. So I don't want too much in here. So I'm going to subtract a little bit of that down the bottom. You need to show overlay so you know what you're doing here. And just rub that bit off the bottom because I, I really don't want that. That's too close to the camera to be highlighted. Remember I said that before. If something's close to the camera, you, you've got to be careful with what you do with it but i like that it's just that little bit in the middle this is subtle it really is subtle it's not something i'm going to um, hold my hat on uh, the other thing i might do here is just add a little bit of um, color to that foreground so let's go back to uh, the first layer that one there i might just add a touch of yellow just warm that up a little bit so I've, got, I've gone plus four or five there. It doesn't really look all that much difference, which is good. It's a subtle addition. Um, yeah, looks all right to me. So I am now going to exit. Let's just go full screen, press F on the keyboard. And I think we're just about done. That's it. That is how I have done my single edit exposure. The critical tools, Star Exterminator in Photoshop, absolutely critical to get this end result i used topaz d noise but you don't necessarily have to use topaz uh, you can use the built-in tools in lightroom or photoshop there's there's some quite good noise reduction tools but i use it because it's quick easy and it does a fantastic job so there you have it i hope you like the final edit so I hope you found some value in this video. I'm sure you all have your favorite methods to edit your nightscape photography. And I'm always keen to hear about those down below in the comments section of this video. Anyway, I'm looking forward to my next adventure out there somewhere under the stars. I have no idea where that will be yet, 
So until the next video, you have an awesome week and I'll see you later.